flip it. <laughs> As I cough, wonderful. Hello. I see Kate's on there already. You know how you think you have everything set up and then you push the go live button and it's like, switch your stream because you're not where you need to be. I had it all flipped. It is what it is. Okay, let me, I think I have everything going. Let's see, Kate says, hi, hi, Lori. Hi, Kate. Ooh, spaghetti squash. I didn't actually grow spaghetti squash this year. I didn't grow squash this year. I probably should have. I love spaghetti squash. It's one of my faves. Alrighty. I think I have everything set. Let me know. I have it all muted on the phone end, Kate. So if that's <laughs> hopefully not going to be an issue. I have my coffee. This is 40 ounces. Okay, I have 32 ounces under the belt already today. I'm probably not going to be able to drink a whole lot or I'm going to have to leave you all, um, you know, do stuff. So I did card class last night live in person at my studio here in Minnesota. And so today I'm going to share with you, you know, basically what we did. So my mock-ups and then what we did last night. So this was my mock-up. Of course, I was not happy with how my letter placement and of course you know so we fixed it on the new one and of course I had to switch up my bird colors because god forbid we do the same one over again right I will probably go back to blue today but and then we did this one so this is kind of a twofer card it ends up being one cut for my background piece for the one and then using that negative for my focal point on the other one. We even did envelopes last night. That was unplanned, but everything was there. So it was good to roll. So for this one, I am using winter birds. I might be bringing in one of the birds from Flappy Holidays as well, but any of the birds from that set would work. You could definitely just take the card design on this one and use it as something else. So my flat lay tray. Um, I usually end up, when I cut these, I cut probably a dozen because I plan on using about, I have room for six at my table for class. And then I have, I usually send two to my nanny, two or three to my nanny for her card group. And then I will sell whatever's left on my Etsy shop if Etsy lets me load it. So for anything that is like, if you... Even Christmas cards, like when I might end up taking these out and just doing them as my Christmas cards, part of my Christmas cards for this year. So you're cutting in multiples. And so to do that, I take my dies that I want. I glue everything or not glue. I tape everything down and in. So I just have to put it on top of the piece of paper, run it through. And then for this one, you get two for one because you're doing, and I do this a lot for classes just because it cuts down on my prep time a teeny tiny bit, but it cuts down on my prep time. And you end up getting your positive and your negative or your positive and your negative, however you want to look at that one. Let me see. What did I do for these ones? So these ones, because I'm going to do a shaker on this piece here, I did go in already and use, it's called Couture Creations. It's a, I want to say it's a little over, I wish it was the other way. I wish it was four and a, four wide, but I think this one's like five and a quarter wide, maybe. Let me measure. Um, let's see. Zero line. So this one's just under five. Yeah, I wish it was either five wide or four and a quarter wide. Like pick a lane, half inch. But by putting this on before I actually ran anything through the die cut machine, these ones are already going to have adhesive on them. This one doesn't, but the rest of them are going to have adhesive on the back and it makes adding that acetate later on a lot easier. At least for class it does. So we're also going to talk about embossing folders. So last night, Kate's going to laugh because I was totally, 
I was prepped, right? Like I had everything done, ready. I had pulled my embossing folders beforehand and I set it off to a place I was not going to lose it. And then I couldn't find it. It's what happens. But I did end up, I did find it right before class started. So at least, you know, we have that. So I ended up using this one, which is, let me see if I can find it. The 664249, I do believe it's a Tim Holtz one. It's a 3D texture fade. I liked it because it kind of looks like a snowflake. It's not it's not necessarily a snowflake, but it kind of has that vibe. And I liked the look it gave on my cardstock. And there everything drops. But you don't need that one to do this one. I also brought in, I found this one after the fact. So this one is a 3D and textured impressions by Karen Breen. I picked this one up. I picked both of them up actually at Hobby Lobby when they still carried that stuff on super clearance. I think I paid like two or three bucks for each. I think I paid a buck 50 for the Tim Holtz one and maybe two bucks for this one. And so this one's just a smaller print snowflake wise. It has, I did my card with this one last night. I kind of almost like the big swirlies better. It just has more, I don't know, a fuller texture, but this one would work. Anything that has like a swirly wind blowing look. I pulled out this one because I think this one would be cool with that snowflake on top. Either side. It kind of reminds me of cracked ice. And I think this one in blue would be pretty. I might use this one today instead of the other one. You know me. I like to switch things up. I can't ever make anything the same twice. It's, yeah, it's just not how I roll. Alrighty. I think I have everything else rip roaring and ready to roll. I also did die cut and color or I'll die cut out a couple of extras. So usually for class, I allow them a little bit of creative freedom on their end, you know, as you have, I liked it. And this one's, this one is just a plain cuddle bug embossing folder. So it's not the 3d one, but that would work too. Anything that kind of has that snowflake vibe, swirling snow vibe, um, Anything like a, a swirling one would definitely work. I don't know. It, it's, you know, I try to use what I have in hand and not buy new things. Well, except for stamps. I like to buy new stamps for class. But the other stuff that I like to, I like to use what I have in my stash. Find new ways to use it, more ways to use it. So we're going to start with some ink blending because I need it to dry a little bit. I really don't need it to dry before I emboss it, but I want it to dry a little bit because I'm going to do some splattering on it before I run it through my machine. And this one will set off to the side. So we're going to start with this one. This one is this piece that has, let me find, you know, I just had the cards. You know how I say I lose things quickly? <clears throat> it's probably everything that just fell on the floor, right? So we're going to start with the background for this one. So this is the one that I did last night with that smaller snowflake pattern. It's still really pretty. I like the big one. I think it just adds, because the snowflake's so big, I think it just adds to it. That's, you know, but, and if you don't have the snowflake, a circle there would work fine as well. Any kind of aperture that would allow, hello, Marie, anything that would allow, you know, a focal point. I just thought the snowflake was neat as a focal point, you wouldn't have to have this snowflake. If you have the other snowflake from Lawn Fawn, it's, I don't have it die cut out. You could also include it with that cut out middle part. It would be a gorgeous one, you know, to add as your focal point. I just did it in this way because it was easier for me. So to start with this one, this one I did in Distress Inks. So either Distress Prize Ribbon, just because these are the colors that I went with my papers, I kind of tried to go with either Blueprint Sketch, Prize Ribbon. I have both the Distress and the Oxide. They all looked beautiful last night. We each did a different one and it worked well. I Because when I did my original, I had started with whichever one of the two is darker, Prize Ribbon maybe, or I don't remember. I started with the one and then I put in the other one. You really couldn't tell by the time we added the snowflake on it. So I think I'm going to go with blue, with prize ribbon today. 
And for this one, because my snowflake is going to sit here, I start my ink blending in the middle. A, if I get a big blotch, it's not really going to matter. And then I'm just going to blend it out to my sides. And this one, that embossing folder really hides a lot. I taught, so I have three of them that showed up last night to class and none of them are well versed in blending or any of those like stenciling. They all did a wonderful job. It all turned out beautiful. It was, you know, it was blotchy. They were worried because it was blotchy and I didn't give them good Strathmore or Bristol smooth paper to ink blend on because I wasn't worried about it being blotchy and inky. So I usually only use that if I'm going for a really nice smooth blend. I like to use cheaper paper for when I don't care if it's blotchy and or, you know, it's it just, it's not as big of a deal to me to use that kind of paper. So I just want to make it blue. I'm not too worried about it kind of doing a stronger hand in the middle where the snowflake is going to sit. Not that you're even going to see that. It's one of those things. And then we're going to bring in my splat box here. I just buy, I bought a plastic dish tote from the Dollar Tree. And that's what I use. It's been washed. You can't really tell. It got heavily splattered last night. But yeah, it's it works well for a dollar and if it breaks, I guess it breaks, but I'm stained. I'm not worried about it. So for this one, we're just going to do a spray of water to kind of give that distress ink time to move around, give it a little bit of texture and all the things. And then I'm coming in with a mica, a mica, I guess I used Brutus Monroe's aqua pigments in blue frost. I think I went with this one. For this time, you could definitely use uh, Distress Mica Spray Stains, uh, Pearlescent Watercolors. I'm trying to think of other, like, what are the other ones? I can't think of them right now. The Pearls. Is that what they're called? The Perfect Pearls with some water. I think Lawn Fawn has, what's theirs called? Stardust Stickles? Is that what it's? No, it's Stardust. I don't know whatever anything that has that little sheen to it and or mica shine i'm going heavy with my splatters this morning last night was finer i think i just did them off the side so they were a lot finer on the splatter and but we're just gonna let this sit and dry um and then i will run it through the embossing or the die cut machine with the embossing folder after i'm done coloring so let me just clean this one up. Water. So for class, I already have everything die cut out. It just makes life easier when I'm, I don't have to sit there with the die cut machine after or while they're, while they're trying to do their things. And so it makes my life a little bit easier. Let's see, we'll set those ones off to the side. I will probably lose these because I don't have them in a container. We all know how I work, right? Okay, I think this one has all of my pieces. I'm going to put them on a double or a full sticky note piece to help hold them down to color. I usually like to stick each one down individually, color it, and then move it. But I will try to behave today and just stick them all down and go from that, that end of things. Alrighty, and then my little pieces here. I'll probably come in with those later. I did stamp those in Crunchy Leaf from Lawn Fawn. I only have the six by six in that, but I wanted them to be brown just so they didn't, I don't know, cause they're twigs and yeah. And then my two, or my two branches here. I did do a color guide. I will take a picture of this one and I will throw it up on my blog, probably in the coordinating post that will link to this video. I have to get that done today, maybe. But otherwise it will also be on my Uhuhu marker blends page. So I kind of did it on, what did I use? I ended up using Hammer Mill smooth paper to see how it blended on. Eh, I wasn't 
impressed. So for the most part, I'm using, I numbered my markers for class, so one, two, three, and four. So kind of giving them ideas of how to color them. And a lot of them just went with one color, or I just went with two colors last night to make life a lot easier. So I'll probably just do two colors today. I'll probably stick to a two and three for the most of them, maybe doing a one, two, three here and there. But for the most part, we'll try to keep it fairly simple today. So, um, and I did put my colors in both the old style because I've been using my old ones because I'm trying to use them up before <laughs> I break into all of my new ones. It's not working very well for me, but you know, you get what you get, right? Let's see. Did I do number 12? I'm trying to think what my reds were. Red was number 15 or 14. Let's see, 14 and 15. So I'll just start with those and then I'll pull in the gray. For my gray, I did a warm, warm gray 160, which would probably be equivalent to a Copics W1 in color, color wise. I'm trying to think what my reds would be. My reds would probably be, I don't know what the true reds are for Copics. I wish I could tell you better on that one. Um, let's see. I have a clipboard with my Copic on it. Can I find it? Mm, no. All right. I guess it is what it is. So I'm trying to think what the reds. Kate, do you know what the reds would be? That one's not giving me any of the commentary. So I can't see any comments. It's I don't know if it's just being funny or I don't know. I saw on my phone Marie pop in and that was all I've seen. So my computer is not giving me comments today. Oh, it is what it is. So I will start and you know, so anything new, fun and exciting. I, it's cold, <laughs> not a fan. My oldest says, no, my youngest says next week it's supposed to be 60 mom. That's what he told me last week too. He lies, I'm telling you. All lies. And yes, when I colored my, when I put my birds on my mock-up sheet, I did not stamp this one. I stamped the other one that I didn't end up actually using. <sighs> it was, and I didn't even realize it until after I was done coloring. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not the bird that I used for this one. And yeah, it is what it is, right? So yes, I did get to the garden this week and I did dig up potatoes and carrots. And so I planted purple carrots last spring. And so it did freeze. It got, you know, we had probably frost in the first little bit and then it warmed up enough that it kind of came out. And so the boys were like, mom, you got purple carrots. And I think they knew that I had purple carrots as in I had purple carrots because I did them last year that way. And so my husband was like, well, they're purple because they froze. And I'm like looking at him funny. I'm like, what? And he's like, well, yeah, your carrots turn purple because they froze. And I'm like, no, my carrots turn purple because that's what I planted. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you and your colored vegetables. Because I made him grab a, a purple onion for me the other night. I made homemade guac. And he was like, I'm like, grab me a purple onion. And he comes back with a yellow onion. And I'm like, no, a purple onion, not a yellow onion. He's like, what's the difference? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it looks pretty. <laughs> it's purple, team purple. So I go in with my darkest shade. I'm going to use two colors to just kind of simplify it today. So by doing two colors, I usually go in with my second layer. Over my first layer, which was my darkest tone, I do not color my lightest tone first. I just go in with my darkest and lay down the shadow. And then for my third layer, I go over all of it one last time. It kind of, I don't know, to me it helps the blend and it's what I have the best luck with. I am a lazy colorer every chance I get. So if that's, I don't, I don't know. I don't like recoloring images. I, you know, to me, 
coloring is something I have to do to finish what I'm what you know my end result because I have to color it if I could get by without coloring images and just create without you know but then they look you know I like coloring I just it's not something that I like to spend copious amounts of time on probably because I I'm one of the only ones that would appreciate or other crafters appreciate you know pretty colored things and you know most of my recipients don't care hi Jessica squirrel there should be a card in the mail for mr. link oh I went in with the wrong color well I guess this one's just going to be a later bird mr. links birthday card should be in the mail well it is in the mail hopefully it gets there before his birthday or by his birthday no promises because the postal system has not been too I don't know on top of it lately at least not here it's not been too on top of it oh, I went really light with this one okay I guess we're I guess we're going super light it is what it is So I was telling, we tested cows this morning. So we did a test, which is, I don't know, dairy, herd improvement. I don't think that's right. Dairy herd something association. I don't know what the I stands for. But basically they come out and we hook up meters. And so each cow that gets milked gets, you know, they figure out how many pounds. Pounds, let's see. 8.6 pounds of milk per gallon. Does that make sense? So we get paid in pounds and not gallons per se. And so, but they come out and they test for milk weight and then protein, butter fat, somatic cell, which kind of helps with indicators of if they're not feeling well, if something's not going right, They it kind of helps with that stuff. But it helps with the feeding and the other things like making sure their nutrition is good. So I forgot we had that. I didn't forget, but I always forget that it takes more time than normal. So I was running late today. No breakfast for me. Okay, I lie, because I had a brownie for breakfast this morning before I went to the farm. Sugar for the win. It wasn't really a brownie. It was more of a blonde brownie. More of a cookie. It had peanut butter in it. I mean, you know the same thing right I didn't get a great blend on that one but that's probably because I went from not the right color to the right color <clears throat> you know I wasn't paying attention it happens so I'm coming in with my second darkest on my sheet I could go with it maybe I'll do this one in the darkest tone I kind of kept my little birdies a little bit on the lighter side just because they're baby birds. Maybe I should have, I don't know, are baby birds lighter or are they darker? Usually they're not, usually they're kind of lighter. I don't know, are they lighter in tone? I guess it depends on the bird, doesn't it? And for this one, I never know how to do this one. So this is how I have been doing this one. I don't, because I'm going to put gray on the face on that one. So I usually do gray on the face there. So I don't know if that's, you know. I don't know proper bird coloring technique. I probably should look up birds and go that route. I just kind of color and go from there. <laughs> Football is done for the year. Um, I'm sure we're sad because we had a losing season. I'm happy that my child did not get injured. He, they had a lot of injuries this year on their team, which was, it was rough. So watching it was rough. I don't think he realizes, you know, how rough it is for mom to watch and, you know, make sure that he doesn't get injured. He's just out having a good time. I'm sitting there, and, you know, hoping that he doesn't get hurt. I always 
take pictures. Well, I usually always take pictures. So we had visitors, so then I didn't take pictures the nights that we had company with. And I didn't take pictures the night that it rained. Well, my sister-in-law was up, so we technically had visitors. So I did not take pictures that night. I think I took like a couple on my phone, but that was it. I didn't bring my big camera. And so their last game, which was, I think two weeks ago, they had playoffs. And so the other mom that takes pictures for the team, she's like on the field all the time. And I was only on the field twice. Cause when my husband's with, I try to sit with him. You know, I, I try to be the nice wife or do, do the, you know, keep him company. So usually I would just take pictures from the stand, which turn out fine, but once it gets dark out, it's just, it's rough. And so I was asking her, cause she has the better lens. I'm like, do yours turn out? I'm like, you obviously have a better lens. And she's like, nope, they get blurry. And she's like, it's frustrating. I'm like, oh good, it's not just me. So if I take 400 pictures and I only get a hundred that aren't totally, completely blurry, to no end oh it drives me nuts i did get a couple of good shots so you know i always aim for at least if i get a few good shots i'm i'm happy and i'm granted if it was the old way of doing things with film and not digital i'd probably be a little bit stingier with my number of photos i take but yeah, I, I think I, and then I upload them to a Facebook group so the other moms can see them and the boys. I like action shots. They're kind of fun to do. Let's see. Most of those are done. I just have my little ones to do. I think I did, I did two and three on this one and I did three and four on that one. I kind of like it a little bit lighter I think. I could also do some gray on it and kind of blend in the gray. Hmm. Should we blend in some gray on this one? Let's do the underside gray on him and see how he turns out. I'm up for trying new things. And we'll go this way. I'm going to do a little bit of tip to tip to try to get an okay blend with my blue and my gray as I can't touch tip to tip because I can't stand over the top. <sighs> it is what it is, right? Okay, let's see if we can get a little bit of a blue gray blend here. Well, it wasn't perfect, but we'll come in with the blue and call it good. I'll come back with gray and kind of blend that blue in a little bit. I always was afraid to do the tip to tip method until I got, I had, um, what are they called? Chameleon alcohol markers for a little bit. My cousin was like, you need to get these. And so I picked up, I don't know, it was like an 18 or 20, whatever they had for their pack. And I was like, you know, I because I color the way I color, it was backwards to me because they start, you know, when you did the, because you basically just take the colorless blender and you go in from, you know, you, you count so many seconds and so you know how many seconds. It took me a while to get used to them, but once I did, it wasn't too bad. But you kind of do it lightest to darkest and it was the opposite way that I colored. So I struggled with it. I ended up giving them to my goddaughter to play with because once I got the Ohuhus and I still have, you know, 150-ish Copics, but once I got the Ohuhus and I was just like, I have way too many marker options. I don't need any more. So I ended up giving them up, but it helped me to, when I was learning to play with them, I did a lot of tip to tip with the colors and I wasn't too worried about my shall I say my ink or my marker I don't know my alcohol kind of ruining the other tip because I was okay with giving you know I was okay with getting rid of them and so I did a lot I learned a lot when it comes to blending colors to colors not in this like 
blues and purples and greens and blues and that kind of way like I don't know it just sometimes it's good to get a cheap marker just to play with and not be afraid to ruin it because I wouldn't do that with my Copics they were way too expensive to try that on so I'm less leery now on blending my marker ink colors together than I used to be tip to tip wise I mean, I would be okay with doing like the blue to the blue to get a good enough blend in there. But when it came to doing anything like blue to green or blue to purple, oh no, I was scared. And then for my scarves, I usually just do, I try to put the darker tone towards the outside and work my way in with the other colors just to kind of give it that rounded effect. I don't follow any rules because that would mean I'd have to know what the rules were. I don't like rules. I just do what looks good to me. Uh, I'll do the berries after a while as I color on myself. I'm coming in with my mid-tone, which is the number 14 here. And I'm actually going to do this one in just the two tones again, but I'm just going to layer it so you'll see. I like to let them dry just a teeny tiny bit in between when I do it this way. So either if I'm just doing one marker color and then I'm trying to do kind of like a two-tone blend, I'll let it dry a little bit and then I'll come back in and then blend it all the way through. And you can see how it's darker where you go over it the second time or that second layer of red that's here so this is my darkest this is my second layer and then that's just one layer and so it kind of gives the illusion that you're using three colors of marker but you're really only using two and you can get that with one if you do three layers of ink on top instead of two i tend to do this part a lot because it's i don't know it it's faster how I roll. Um, let's do these quick. And then for my little berries here, I think I just did kind of like a dark shade on this, kind of like a half circle with my darkest tone and then I'll come in with my lighter one. Sometimes when I do them, I will vary them a little bit more, but for the sake of time and me babbling on, I'll just do a two-tone one. And you can do them flat. It's not, I don't know. There, I don't think it's a huge, a huge deal. Because they're such a small, small image that it's not that big of a, you know, if you do it just a solid. I think last night I just did a solid. I actually ended up doing that light blue shade on, I think I did that light blue. I might have even gone in with a blue gray on my berries last night because I made my birds red and I was like, oh, that's a lot of red. It probably would have been fine to go with red. So for my beak, you can do yellow or orange. I think I did yellow. I might have done orange. I'm going to go yellow. I don't know. And I really just did one layer of color on them. They're little you can go back in with a, another layer on the underside of the beak if you want. I don't think I noticed much. I mean, I did it, but I just didn't feel it was enough of a co color variation. I could have gone in with a darker tone underneath, but for the most part, that's all I did for that one. Let's go in with some browns. I think here we go. So for my browns, I'm using a 98 and a 95 for my branch, which are super dark colors. And then for my bird nest, I did 132 and 104. So 104 is my darker of the two tones. So we'll start with the bird nest. And so for that one, I just laid the darker tone on the outside. And then I just traced all those little detailed lines. Not that you have to. I don't think it's really one way or the other. You know, it just gives it, to me, it gives it just a teeny tiny bit of texture. And that's kind of what I was going for. 
And then if you want to darken up the outside, go over it again with a second layer. And that'll start to give you that darker tone. And then I just take my 132 and kind of, and yes, I will use the broad tip just because it's a fairly easy color and it just makes life faster. I've gotten pretty good at the broad tip on my markers because I like to be lazy and or fast. I don't like taking too much time. All right, so for my branches, I just kind of went with the darkest shade on the underside. And I think for this one, I kind of did, I just followed those lines that are already in the stamp. You could definitely go dark on top and bottom for both of these. And it might give it a little bit more of a rounded look. Well, we, they're both on separate cards. I can do that here. Let's go this way. And then I'm going to run these in. And you can either choose to add those lines in after the fact or before depending upon your brown tones i think and then for this one just coloring in do, 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 do. i still have tape on there again i did it last night too it's like it's not There's that one, and then we'll go with this one. Let's see. All right, so I have all of my images colored. These are for both cards. So last night we did it, like, they were like, that's a lot of images for one card. I'm like, it's for both cards. So it wasn't too horrible bad. Once we had the images colored, I think we were done within two hours last night, which is pretty good because we tend to chat more than we tend to create. It happens. So this one is dry enough. I think I'm going to try this one today with this one. So I'm going to run it through my Vegabond 2. I have it all set up onto the side. I can't actually show you. So you're going to hear it. You're not going to see it. So for this one, I just have the platform, the regular platform that comes in with that little, little sheet turned off and then only one cutting plate. So just one cutting plate and then I only ran it through once. And of course I did it backwards again. I don't know how I keep doing it that way. Oh, this one is upside this way. So I don't know if you can see it. It's got some... I don't know, cracked eye texture. Maybe I would have liked that side better. It's fine. All right, so for this one, so we're basically doing this layout and we're just gonna add to that layout again. Let me find my pieces. Oh, they're over here off to the side, right where I am. So for this one, Because I have that adhesive sheet on here already, I should be able to just peel it up like a sticker. I said I like to make my life a little bit easier. So, peeling that one up like a sticker should work well. And then just putting that towards the top, because I want my sentiment to go towards the bottom here, leaving it enough room, you could definitely put the sentiment up on top if that's more your speed or you want to switch it up and I'm gonna skew it and then because my texture is kind of I'm gonna add some glue to this one just to make sure that it sticks here let me grab my glue so we I think so I did embossing on all of my sentiments for class so I won't show you that today because I just did them in massive quantities but I think because it's been I used my anti-static powder tool it was just rough and I think it's because the furnace is going and so I think it's just a lot drier 
here than it used to be, so the static level is so high. I wonder if a dryer sheet would help with that. I have no clue. Has anyone that lives where it's the air will freeze your face have tips on embossing when it's this cold out? Or when the furnace is running because yeah i think it's more that the furnace is running and i don't have i should really go with um i really don't like how i colored that one i really should go with um which one's this one okay and it's going to be those i really should get my a humidifier going and see if that would help but yeah it's so staticky it's not cool man not cool at all so for this one I like to build the whole branch before I actually put it down on my card it kind of helps with my placement of the other things if that makes sense you can definitely eyeball it and go and usually I will cut off you know the overhang here for class I didn't because I was trying to save myself some time and not be too picky I like to be picky so I'm gonna pop him in there and I really am just gonna kind of go with what I had for my layout on the branches and things I was picking my aunt was here last night and was like because she does floral she'll do floral arrangements and I'm like Nita why why can I do floral arrangements with real flowers, but with paper stuff, I struggle. And I think it has to do with the tucking things in. Like in a floral arrangement, you can tuck things in and, you know, see where it needs. Because it's 3D. I think it has to do with that 3D issue. So for these, I like to do some of them on top and some of them on the bottom. It's about as 3D as you can get. And I think that's part of it is making sure that you have multiple layers in there and adding in that, you know, that respect. I don't know. Let's see. I don't want this one all the way up there. This will go there. And then we're going to tuck this one back behind again. Back here. Let's see. And working with the things, you know, the rule of threes. Everything looks better in threes. Nature is done in three. I don't know if nature's really done in three. Is it? And mathematically, I think it is. I don't know. I think we look good there. And then adjusting him up or down, depending upon where I put my snowflake on there. And I'm going to just add this one with some glue. And then I'm going to pop that down. So a pretty simple on that one. And then this bird we're just going to put down with some glue. And then the other one, I want to just pop that one up just a teeny tiny bit just to give it a little bit of bounce. You could definitely skip this step if you want to. I had my gloobers. See, I lost it already. It was sitting on top of there. Here we go. I have a little dish on my desk of either scrap, you know, those or scraps. Because, you know, I like to use scraps up. And this way they're readily available all in one place. If I can find it. <laughs> we'll just take that off. If I don't put any on the wings, I can kind of fluff them a little bit. I don't know, is it fluff? I can flap them. We'll, we'll say that. So I can flap these a little bit if I don't glue them down. And then it gives it just that little bit, that little bit of extra. And then we're just going to pop that onto a white card base. I've been using top fold card bases. I ended up buying a ream of heavy cardstock and taking it to our local. Oh, look, I got red on it. Flip. I took it to our local 
newspaper, a small town, and so they cut it for me. I know you can take it to Staples and they will cut it for you, but I've heard horror stories, and so I trust the local small town one more so than I do Staples. But I know you can take it to Staples and they will do that as well for, I think it's like three to five bucks. I pay the newspaper five bucks to do mine because they're like, oh, we don't normally do this. I'm like, I'll give you five dollars. It saves me like lots of time. But you can also just cut them yourself. I'm just, I always have issues with that one. Now to do the season sweeties. I actually do... Hey, look, I lost it again. Go figure. <laughs> Don't mind me while I look for the thing that I just had in my hand. I even had an extra one laid out. Where did I go with my tray? Here we go. It's where you said it. Silly child. Okay, I'm not going to use that one either because obviously I have dropitis. So I usually, for these, either you can do, you can cut out, I usually stamp it, emboss it, and then, oh, I cut it too wide. I stamp it, emboss it, and then I cut it out with the die cut. Just because when I do them in mass quantities, it seems to be easier if, I'm doing them in class then we will I will cut everything and then I have a I don't know what you would what you would call it. I have a template that they pop into so I cut all of my most used banner sentiment strips into a piece of cardstock and then I bought like the cheap off brand of the Cricut 12 by 12 mat and cut them down to fit inside the misty and so that piece of paper sits right on top of there and then they will just stick in there and it makes life easier for if you're doing a bunch of them all at once or even just one because you can die cut it put it on that put your sentiment line it up in the little slot put your piece of paper in there so if you're doing multiples that works so i did pop up that one it didn't need to be popped up but i like the added pop on that one so that is card number one so in red I did these in like a bluish gray I might have to go back in there today with a little bit darker blue gray to kind of make them pop a little bit more I just used what I had with me at the table last night and that's what was in my big my travel satchel so there is card one so now on to card two which shouldn't be too horrible because we did parts of it well we did the coloring and the coloring always seems to be the most time consuming um I forgot to grab my stencils give me two seconds I washed them last night it never happened I knew I was going to forget something today see they're nice and shiny and clean so I actually washed them and they were in the kitchen, which I never washed them in the kitchen. I always washed them in the bathroom. Weird, I know. So I have a piece of cardstock and a piece of acetate. You could do this totally on the card base. I did it on the piece of paper just for ease of class because most of them are new to card making. And if you mess up the card, this piece, you can flip it over. If you mess up the card base, well, we have to start with a whole new card base. And card bases are a little bit more expensive than the other. So for this one, I went in with either a sky blue, crystal blue. Um, you could definitely use tumbled glass. I wanted something lighter. So either a tumbled glass distress ink or distress oxide. I went with regular dye inks on this one. And I'm just using my old close to my heart ones nothing too you know over the top I just want to add a little bit of color on this one I'm trying not to get it to be too I don't know blotchy like the other one was concentrated in the middle here I really don't want it to be concentrated I want just a really light a light color there nothing too drastic I just want it not to be white because I want it to have a little bit of contrast with my top piece that's going to sit over the top. 
So it's mostly going to be up here, so I'm not worried about down here. You definitely can start down here and work your way up if you're worried about getting that splotchy, especially if you're using a Distress Oxide. They tend to blend a little bit heavier, and you have to have a little bit lighter hand. So for... Where's my stencil? I just went and grabbed it, right? So for this one, I wanted to add just a little bit of interest inside of that, where that aperture is going to be or where my focal point is. And by adding in, this is the Snowflake Larian Stencil from Lawn Fawn. I'm only using one. If you have a stencil or a Snowflake die cut, cut it out of either like Avery Removable Adhesive and use it that way. Last night, we just used the ink that was left on our blending brush. I'm probably going to do the same thing today. The other thing you could do is come in with a darker shade of a dye ink. So I think for my original one, I used the sapphire. I'm just going to use what's on my blending brush. I'm not too overly concerned with it. It's going to be a darker blue than that really light sky blue. And it'll get just that little bit of interest that I think will add a little something to your opening there. So we're going to pull that off. And then we have a beautiful snowflake on our back piece. Now we're going to set this off to the side and work on this piece. So because I die cut it with that double sided, this is, I think it's called die cut adhesive sheet. So it's double sided, big, you can get it in, I think scrapbooks.com carries it too. I picked that stuff up at Joann's. Usually I use a 40 or 50% off coupon or when they have adhesives on super sale. I usually go that route. Now it didn't cover my whole sheet, which is fine. I wasn't overly concerned with it. I just wanted it to cover most of it. So I will just come in with, of course, I didn't close my glue up today. So we're going to have issues, right? Okay. So I'm just going to come in and do a fine line of glue all the way around. You wouldn't need to do this. And I don't want to put glue on these pieces here. They're going to lift up just a teeny tiny bit so I can build my scene behind them if I so need to. And so I cut my acetate about a quarter of an inch smaller than my panel here. And if you put glue on it, you wouldn't have to. Last night, we didn't always put glue on it. I put glue wherever there wasn't an adhesive last night. But I like to make sure that my glitter isn't going to be always falling out all over the place. It still probably will. But this way, and you can, of course, it's going to stick to me. But this way, it's on there. It's stuck. I don't have to worry about it moving around a whole lot. So once we have this done, we're going to come in with some little mini strips here. I think these ones came from Amazon. They're fairly thin. I'm just doing glitter in this one. I'm not doing any clay bits. And so I'm just going to build my shaker box. But I also want to make sure it has enough of a, I don't know, how shall we say? It has enough stability so it doesn't like get smooshed in the mail if you're mailing it. So I'm going to go fairly close. Whoops. I want to make sure that I butt these up tight. Help with that glitter escaping. I think it's just the pixie dust that just escapes. It's really not glitter. It's, you know. And then for my bottom part here, I ended up building it kind of like this on the bottom. You could definitely just go straight across. I just like having it so my glitter can actually, you're going to see it when it's actually sitting, standing up a little bit more than if you have, you know, you do it down here. I will still put one down there because I need that stability piece. Oh, it's being difficult today. Any big plans for Friday or Friday, however you want to say it. To me, it's it's all just another day of the week. Cows need to get milked 365 days a year. So that's time. Like, they don't care. They don't care if it's Friday. Although, they care when I don't want to get up on Saturday morning. We don't go out. I mean, we used to. That was the only time they really noticed that we were gone. So, I'm going to come in with this one. I'm going to butt it up right away. And then try to make sure that I'm closing that piece up before I 
snippet. And then this leftover piece, I'm just going to throw on the bottom here to kind of help seal things up. Now, when I do a shaker, I like to remove all of the adhesive before I add the glitter. If I put the glitter in here, if I do the glitter last night, I put the glitter on in here for mine. And then for everyone else's, I'm like, yeah, let's do it the other way. Cause sometimes it's easier to do it the other way. I don't know. It's about a horse a piece, I think. But for me, if I'm going to do the shaker bits inside my window right away, I like to remove all of my adhesive before I actually have anything in there. Cause I tend to bump things around and then I get glitter on those and it just doesn't work very well. It's a hot mess. Welcome to my world, the hot mess. <laughs> Laura lives a boring life. Yes, I do too. Like, meh. I think Kate and I might do a surprise. <clears throat> well, not so much a surprise. We might do a live tomorrow. We haven't decided yet. I'm still talking her into it. It's always fun. We'll do crafty chat, but I'm like, we can do a live. It's all good. Uh, let's see. Glitter pieces. I have all my glittery things. I like to do... Where's my other glitter thing? It's on the tray yet. Okay. I have a designated scooper for shaker filling. It's, it's what I do. I can't even tell you where this one came from. It measures 1.25 cc's. I'm sure it was for medicine of some sort or for... Um, it probably came from my matcha thing probably well we'll try i'll try to talk kate into it she thinks she has to get stuff done for her market the next day Psst. we can work on that maybe possibly so i like to overfill my shakers it's what i do i'm bringing in so i think these ones came from a Hero Arts kit, probably. They were just some sparkly stars. The glitter here comes from Walmart. Yeah, it was like three bucks or something like that. I liked, it's called Winter Frost or Winter Fest. I liked the color blue went well. And then because it's a shaker, I like to add something that's going to give it that shakety shake sound. And so for me, the cheapest, what you can do seed beads which work well and usually if I do seed beads I build a well put a little hole in the middle and drop the seed beads in but I've been really liking adding the diamond dots I don't do diamond dots but well I think I've done a couple of little teeny tiny ones but if you do diamond dots you can definitely use your leftovers but our craft store sells these for like I don't know two bucks three bucks but I also like to use them as embellishments on the front works well so for adding my shaker piece I have all of my little shaker bits in the center there I know they're gonna fit in the window I like to put a dot of glue along each of the seams I know my shaker bits are gonna sit there and that's fine I'm going to sacrifice some of my shaker pieces to the gods to hope that we don't have too many escapees I also like to run a bead of glue all the way along my adhesive or my foam as I glue myself because I touched it but it happens I just I don't know I end up with glitter everywhere all the time but this way hopefully I don't glitter bomb somebody unintentionally I'm more than willing to glitter bomb someone I've gone to the ER for glitter bomb you do what you got to do, man. It is what it is. But this way I can just line it up. I did cut my piece of paper a little bit smaller than my actual card front or my actual piece here. As we stick to the table, you will see that. And so it's not going to, it doesn't come all the way down, which is fine as long as it's on the bottom. We had one that didn't go all the way to the top yesterday. So she was like, oh, I'm going to, and I'm like, it's fine. We will just put it on the card base right away. So we did. That's what we did. We put it on the card base right away and we didn't have any escape aids. And then I jokingly told her she needed to mail it to whoever she wanted to glitter. So she had already picked out which child she was going to glitter. I'm not going to tell you which child she's going to glitter. They're going to have to find that out on themselves, on their own. I'm going to add that to a card base right away just because I still have stickies hanging out there and I don't have any other 
things that I have to do on this one, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, let's see here. And then this one is also going to have a small border around it. I use that inside out stitched rectangle stack from Lawn Fawn, which gives you a fairly fine border all the way around. You could definitely have done a full panel instead of having the border. I kind of like that white on white, but this one is also a metallic cardstock. I picked this one up from envelopes.com. I haven't seen it on sale since I bought it. I bought it, it was like stupid cheap. I have a ream of this one and a ream of the other one. I think they were clearing seeing them out for some reason. And I'm not against, you know, buying clearance, beautiful cardstock. I had no clue what it was gonna look like. I just hoped for the best. It looked white and I knew it was going to have metallic flex in it. So I, I lucked out. So for this one, we're going to start with, we're going to start with this part and up, and then we're going to add the rest down here. So on this one, we have the bird sitting on the end. This was my mock-up. It's not what I wanted it to look like, but sometimes in life it doesn't turn out like we want it. And so the next one we adjust. And so when I adjusted, I made sure that I had put these on first and then I centered the nest between the two. It's, it's how we roll. So for this one, I'm going to come in, I'm actually going to trim off just a little bit here because I don't want it all the way over. I just want it part way. And I'm just going to add this with some liquid adhesive. You can definitely use double-sided tape if that's your method of adding things. And because I didn't glue this piece down, it should lift up just enough for me to kind of sneak that under there. And then I can lay that down. I'll press it down. I don't want to put too much glue on it because I don't want it to ooze out onto that plastic or acrylic. Transparent. I use transparency, so on the transparency. That one's going to go there. I need my baby bird. And look, I lost the rest of my pieces. Go figure. I lost the nest. How did I lose the nest? Anyone see the nest? I don't see it on there either. Okay, let's see. It's probably on the floor in Never Never Land. It was by my sleeve. Go figure. So for this one, because I didn't do a whole lot, I didn't actually add any greenery to this one. You definitely could add greenery to this one. We did last night. I'm going to, and let's put this one over here. Did I not? I didn't put any adhesive on it. Whatever. Okay, let's try that one more time. We're going to set that on there. Put him down. We're going to add, put him down. No, we're going to place him down. We're not supposed to put people down. That's not nice. Mm, I put glue on him. We're probably not going to fluff his wings. Go here with it. And then I'm going to wait with the last bird until I have my sentiment done. So for this one, I did from our flock, but we're going to cut off the flock to yours. So I'm going to cut off the flock as close as I can to the flock. Of course, last night we had some other words that we could have used in there. From our flocking nest to yours, which I thought was adorable, but I didn't print any that said from our flocking so I'm gonna have to do that at some point in time I have family to send this to you know they'd understand and then because I want to kind of make sure that my spacing is the same I'm gonna cut it off on the other end so it's about the same as this one it'll make even if my nest isn't end up being centered it'll look my sentiment will look centered I think does that make sense? And one, two, three, four. I think here is about where the other one is. If you count up on the dashes, one, two, three. I do not line up things great. This one ended up being crooked. It's fine. So for this one to make this center, which worked really well last night to figure out our spacing, we added the end first, drop itis and all. So I'm going to butt the end up to the end of the blue on this one and then drop that in clean up my glue mess wipe it on my pants don't worry i still have my bar pants on 
I put a pretty shirt on for you, but I still probably smell. I was running late today. It's all good. And then I'm going to butt my tea up over here to my other one. And then it's just a matter of adding in the E and the S and kind of spacing them so they have equidistance. Hello, Tina. How are you doing today? So I kind of equal distance them. And yes, if I had had more glue on the side, they would have been squished together a little bit more. I kind of liked this spacing on my one from last night. They might have had a little bit more. I don't know. It's about the same though. And yes, I did cut my letters from wood grain cardstock. I just thought it was a fun addition. And yes, I probably would have inked these if I wouldn't have done this one for card class. Because, you know, I would have gone. But it really goes well with the, the other one. And then for this one, I just am going to cut off the white from its little tootsies. And then we'll just place that on top of the end. This one is actually going to send very well just because even though it's a shaker, it's a fairly flat shaker. I didn't over, I didn't do over the top with my spacing on it. So it's fairly thin overall. And so I'm going to put everything down again. And then of course, shake. So I love the fact that we could get two cards out of that one plate cut and it will make, when I do Christmas cards, I very rarely, I used to do all of them all the same all the time. Like I would just math cut 60 cards. We have a large family. 60 doesn't even cut it, but I usually only send out to some of them. And so we end up doing, I used to do a lot. I haven't sent out homemade cards for a while. I usually have a sheet now of like 30 labels that I do. And then I make some extras for whoever sends us a card. I send them a card back. But this way I could get two, whoops, two cards. Let me find the other one. Two cards with that one cut on the piece, but it also just kind of gives you, and you're, a lot of it's the same. It's, but they're totally different overall. So we'll do the envelope quick. So we did remember to do the, we did the envelopes because I handed them their envelopes and I'm like, well, wait, we already have this stencil out and dirty. So let's add some ink to them, which is kind of fun. I normally am not that on top of life. And I told them as much last night. It's like when you go to the grocery store and the local one has, I think they have like, I don't know, points or tokens or something that you can collect now. And she's like, well, do you collect this, the coupon stamp ticket things for your free item? And you have to spend like, I'm sure it's easy now because groceries are expensive, but I don't go there that often. And she's like, well, do you collect the coupon things? And I looked at her and I, I said, I'm just not that put together. <laughs> not that, I'm not that organized. And I'm like, I said, I don't have my life that well together. <laughs> and she just looked at me and laughed. And I'm like, I'm not lying. It's just, yeah, I just don't have time to like remember all the things all the time. It's like one, it was one of those things that I'm like, I probably won't be back in time to get the free item before that promotion ends anyway. So I just, I just want to bring in this so I can do. So my aunt did the back flap. And so I'm sorry if this offends, but I'm like, well, so I had just done the front and she had done the back flap and I'm like, oh, that's cute. And then someone's like, well, I said, well, you can do the back flap if you, I said, you can do the tramp stamp. I said, Nita gave her envelope a tramp stamp because you know, it's on the back. <laughs> So I wanted a tramp stamp. So then they were picking on each other about, you know, taking the stencil and giving themselves some stenciled snowflakes on their the low of their back. Yeah, I'm naughty. I know it is what it is. But so it's a simple added addition to finish up your card envelope. So I have a few. I'm going to close out today. I'll probably do a few more to go with the ones that I have done. Yeah, see, yeah, well, it, it helped that I had my aunt here and she's, you know, got the same sense of humor as I do. So it's all good. And yes, I just tried to make sure that I didn't put like here. If I was, if I'm going to do an address label, it doesn't matter. You can definitely do that front. But I try to leave, you know, because your stamp's going to go there, but kind of leaving some white space so it's not totally over the top. But look, I already have six Christmas cards done. 
it's all good. At some point in time, I might actually get them. I made Halloween cards. How many Halloween cards did you get sent out, Jane and Marie? <clears throat> Zero. I maybe got one to Kate. I lied. I sent one to Kate and I sent one to my niece. But that one was more my Adams family one. And that was just, you know, it's bluebirds, redbirds. You switch up your colors. Um, I like to keep them similar in color. So next month we have, I have card class here locally on the 7th of December. So I will probably do a live on YouTube probably. It depends on how my week goes because I will be back from vacation. But I think we... Or I think we test for milking again that morning after. So I will try to do it that Friday, maybe that Saturday. We'll see how life is going for the most part. I can switch it around. I don't look very pretty. It's called getting up at getting up at mm, 3.45 in the morning. I didn't go to bed last night until like 11.30. It was not smart on my part, but it was what it was. So it, it is what it is. It's like I've pushed it up too much. So Kate and I will maybe be on tomorrow. I don't know. Yes, farm life. It's, 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 it is what it is. Field work is done. Thank God. So that should be a little bit less overall, like on my time. Usually winter is my, I will do more lives just because I have more time to do lives. And a little less, a little less farm stuff that pops up here and there. But I will try to do a couple of more lives. <sighs> we'll see how it goes. Um, I have not been doing, I have one video that needs to get edited and voiced over today. I should probably get that done. It probably won't get done today. Let's be honest. I'm behind on book work. And... I think I have one set for next Friday and I don't have anything else done currently. So you might see a live next week because it's faster for me to do a live than it is for me to edit and do a voiceover. And we didn't do too bad today. So an hour and 15 minutes and we got two cards. Granted, all the cutting was done and it was just a matter of creating and making. I think I have a couple of extra card kits. I will try to get them up on Etsy. I tried to get the Halloween one up on Etsy because I had one left over for the Halloween one and Etsy would not let me push publish. So I'll probably just give that one away to my niece and yeah. I will try to get these ones up because I think I have a couple of extra because I had a couple of ladies that couldn't make it last night. So and you know whatever doesn't sell I will just make as Christmas cards. It's all good. My mug, there is a girl, I want to say she's, she's not that old. Is she 14? I don't know, somewhere between 14 and 17. She lives in Minnesota and she does art. And so she is, she started doing town mug art. And so this is her design. Paintsville actually has two because two of the shops in Paintsville, which is a small town, did, whatever commissioned work from her for mugs. So she does. So Minnesota has lots of little towns. I know the one that I actually live in. They just got mugs in at their local gift shop, sort of like it's a, it's like a gifty shop, like a crafty gift shop. I don't know. What, I don't know what to call it, but they just got their Richmond mugs in. So I have to go and pick up a Richmond mug yet, but I have my Painesville mug and it, they're all, she does them all, you know, local to whatever's in the town. So they're kind of cool. If you're in Minnesota, you might see them. I don't know. I think Wisconsin has some of them too. I don't know her name. I don't know if it's even on here. Let's see. Is it on? No, I don't think it's on here. Yeah, she didn't sign it. So I don't have a name for you, but they're kind of cool. So I, I think it's awesome that, you know, she has made a very good business up of it. I know she has, I don't know if she has an Etsy page, but I know she has maybe a Shopify account and she sells other artwork too. Her mom helps her with it. So it's kind of a cool story. So that's where my mug came from. This is, well, I take one mug to the farm, but it's a 32 ouncer. So this is probably 40 ounces. I'll be 
flying off the walls later because that's a lot of caffeine for me. So anyways, I hope you have an amazing Friday. I hope you enjoyed today. If you didn't catch the whole thing, catch the replay. I will, it should load live. I, I'm still working. Let's just say it didn't start out very well today. I thought I was good and it didn't work out very well. So, all right, my nose itches. I need to go and eat breakfast yet and maybe a nap. We'll see. Have an amazing day. I will maybe be able to catch Craft Roulette live tonight. I'm hoping so. We get done a little earlier with the time change. So, yes, time changed in Minnesota. I was wrong. <sighs> and thanks, Tina. I hope you have a blessed day as well. But yes, time changed in Minnesota. It was not supposed to, but our federal government did not pass it. The Senate did, the House didn't, and so we're still stuck in going back to regular time. I was hoping we didn't have to. So yes, have an amazing day and keep getting inky. I tell you to behave, but I don't plan on behaving for the day. So bye.